In life, there are things that go on underneath the surface. Below the very ego-driven like dialogue you give in the head, below the standard arguments you're giving, there's always something at work inside that you're either not acknowledging or maybe you just are working on and still working through. We all have our issues, right? Okay, these complexes that hide underneath the surface if you don't acknowledge them, right? So in theory... I take this and bring it out because this is reality. If you don't agree with that, then I don't know what to say to you. You haven't looked at yourself enough. So if you do agree with that, where I'm coming from with this is why do we see that online politics, the extremeness of the left or right, just seems so unuseful in every single category. They seem to just be reacting to each other and saying that each other is a, a demon, essentially. And why is that? Why? What is really going on? I think that the reality is, underneath both sides, is this level of um, complex that they haven't worked through. And it could be different in either or. Like, if I'm being real with you in every single possible way, I feel like a lot of the aggression and strong feelings that come with um, some identity stuff on the left, and including gender or whatever else you want to throw in there, is coming from a place of not feeling, like, loved. Because reality is, if... In theory, that there is no gender, right? Because gender is assuming that there is a a social paradigm, right? Because sex is objective if you exist in the woods by yourself. Gender, they say, is objective too, but it's a different thing. When they say that, they mean the traits that determine your gender in your head are objective, which is true. Like as if you went to the Amazon and men were like... um, Basically, like hyena culture, like where women just bang the men all the time and men are subservient. If that were the case, your traditional roles, you wouldn't be really trans if you went to that situation, right? Like, say that you, at in our society, are uh, born a man and feel like you are more like a woman because, um, you know, you just feel more like that. If you went to that society, you would not feel like that then. You would feel more like a man <laughs> in their terms because it's backwards. It exists because of the social paradigm, right? Okay, so if that's the case, then why is it so uh, aggressive? Like, we need to understand this. When I think it's quite simple, then. if Because the reason why we had these genders in the first place, the two, male and female, whatever, is literally just because humans work better when they're given a specific role, right? Is that true? Like, can we all acknowledge that? Now, you can deny that this role is useful, which I might agree with you. In fact, I kind of do. I do think they're kind of whatever at this point in life. But if you're talking about like ancient times, like the, yeah, it might have been helpful in some way, right? To compartmentalize the work. And some came natural. The woman can give birth. That's a huge distincting factor. And you may say, well, that doesn't make a woman nowadays. And that's fine. That's very well fine. But you have to understand why these things exist in the first place. And it doesn't, not saying that it needs to stay that way, but just saying that I don't think even in your own world of how you view gender and the, even the existence of the non-binary in, in pr- principle, it just acknowledges that there is a binary. And why is there a binary? Because of past things. Now, should we eradicate all of it? I don't know if you want to, but even if you did want to eradicate all of it, then you wouldn't have such a strong pull to that identity, right? All right, now for the right. The extreme right. And that's not even that extreme on the left, to be honest with you. But that is f- pretty, that's lefty. Sure. All right. So now for the right. I feel like a lot of the rights issues, like the extreme rights, like the people who are scared of population change or um, demographic change, the white guy who's always talking about like, oh, the Mexicans are going to change. Whiteies are becoming the minority. Little Timmy. I think that all comes from a, a actual insecurity of like their own life experience. I feel like they, po- they need to talk to more people. So this is what I like, because the, the issue is people aren't. Ow. <laughs> I hit myself. That's what I get for being a horrible political commentator on YouTube. I <laughs> People don't actually um, stay racist if they like actually exist in a space with races, different races for a long period of time, if they feel accepted. You know what I'm saying? In general. That's why I like that one famous man who used to go to the KKK rallies. He's a big black guy, fat man, you know, really cool, awesome story. He used to convert people just be- by being there. And they started realizing that, hey, he's one of the guys, too. And you may say, oh, he doesn't, he's not really accepted. They think he's one of the good ones. Well, that's the beginning of it, isn't it? So the reality is, I feel like politics online as a whole are just utterly fucking useless. Because I feel like a lot of people aren't addressing the actual um, problems that are going on underneath. And how do we address them? 
So I'm going to tone it back a bit because it's not really that they're like completely useless. You got to understand what the purpose of them is and why they even exist in the first place. The reason why this content exists on the internet is because people are looking for validation for their own feelings of their own issues they're feeling without actually addressing the problem underneath. And some people are even looking online to find the answer to their problem that they're not seeing in themselves. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means, I think, that influencers aren't actually that influential. I think what they are is a reflection on the culture at large. I think they're a reflection of people who support them and see themselves in the influencer for the most part. I really do. So I think the takeaway is instead of focusing heavy on just um, the feelings of certain subjects, which is okay because it makes people feel acknowledged, you should also be trying to find the deeper issue. And I think a lot of it comes from a lack of feeling um, secure. You don't feel connected to the people around you. Or, yeah, that's pretty much the main one in both cases I gave. I guess the issue is a lot of the people in this world aren't actually trying to look at themselves deeply. So I think we need to make a more cultural shift towards that. That type of behavior of looking at yourself more honestly. I think that's the actual key goal. Because honestly, a lot of these commentators on the internet don't even affect politics in any way. Really. They don't do any actual change in the world. They're just, uh, you know, a talking head, essentially, for the masses, which is fine. But, like, I don't think that adds much value. So if I think if you really want to help the world, you need to acknowledge yourself and your issues more and make that more culturally acceptable. That's it. Peace.